there's no point in planning anything because I'm not going to be alive. Or even if I am, I'm going to be in a wheelchair and I'm not going to be able to do anything. And in fact, if you don't make plans to end your life, you get to the point where you can't end your life. And yet you're not alive either. Um, so I started making plans to end my life. That morning I had woken up with plans to do something next year, the year after, you know, long-term plans to, to, you know, maybe run 300 marathons. I was at about 200. I was at about 200 at that point. Now all of a sudden, there was no future. There's no point in planting the garden next spring because, you know, I'm not going to I'm not going to be able to harvest it, even if I'm still alive. And I remember sitting down, this was probably two months later, still hadn't been officially diagnosed, sitting down with, uh, at a Ferrelli's Pizza with my younger son. And I had researched suicide and made my plans as to how I would end my life. And that would be hypothermia. That was normal behavior. That was a reasonable thing to do, is to sit down with your son and discuss how you're going to kill yourself in six months or four months. Um, because you don't have a future anymore. I never felt like I really lived up to what God wanted, but I tried and I kept on trying. And then I got ALS and that blew this whole show out of the water because here I was having devoted 30 years of my life to doing what God told me to do, wanted me to do. And then he turns around and fucking gives me ALS. Okay, that's it. So Darshel and I, my, my current wife, had become close through running. Marriage is a forward-looking act. Um, I was really uncertain about taking forward-looking acts, actions, um, when I didn't have a future. You know, I knew, I still thought I had maybe two years. I mean, ever since I was diagnosed, I thought I had two years, and that was five years ago. I'm beginning to think I have less than two years now. But I thought I had two years, and it seemed, from what I knew of Darshel, and what would be right for her, as well as what I thought would be right for me, that uh, it would be right to get married, even if I only had, even if we only had a year or two together. I have at this point decided that I will forego invasive ventilation, which means a tracheotomy um, and a breathing machine. But my, my big concern there, aside from not being able to speak, which shuts me down, you know, I write by speaking, I communicate by speaking. Um, if I'm shut down, that seems to impinge on my own reality. Expressing my experience has always been a key part, whether it's through art, photography, writing, um, talking, whatever. Um, if I can't express, if I can't create, um, that's that, from what I can tell, that seems to be the core of my reason for being. I used to think that my behavior would alter the attitude of a deity towards me. Um, if God exists at this point, I don't think she or he or they will be much deterred from their intended course of action by anything I do at this point. Um, so yeah, the answer is I don't know. Um, I used to think I did. I was even arrogant about that knowledge that I know and you don't. But now I know that I don't know. I am pretty sure nobody else knows either. Um, and I'm also pretty sure that there is nothing that 
I can do that will change what happens after I die, whatever it is. As best I can figure, everything stops. Everything goes away. It, for me, my metaphor is I'm leaving the party. Party goes on without me. I guess as I've gone farther along the... I mean, I still... You know, I think about planting a bush in the garden. Well, I'll never see it flower. I won't be around long enough for it to grow to the point where it has flowers. I guess you learn to live without a future. You learn to live without being able to plan very far. You learn to do things anyway. Mm -hmm.